special report by Campbell and Cohen detail the story of one young woman who suffered at the hands of the Falun Gong cult, and it details the brainwashing and the abuse that she went through. And it is through the narcissism of its leader that the world should recognize that Falun Gong in, is in fact a cult that is abusive not just towards its members, but are tools of U.S. foreign policy as well. This is the story of Anna and what she went through. Anna tells the story of her first meeting with the leader, the so-called master, Li Hongji, and what he did to her. When she was 14 years old, she suffered from anorexia. Her mother brought her to a Tang Dynasty style temple deep in the woods, about two hours outside of New York City. She was lied to by her mother, claiming that they were going to run errands. There, she faced a frightening situation. There, she was sat down by a woman warning her to cover her shoulders in the presence of the master. According to the article, he spoke first to the women and then to Anna's mother. Then he looked at Anna, looked right into her eyes. He raised his arms, waving them in the air, and then he chanted something she couldn't understand. By then, it was pretty clear what this was supposed to be. This was supposed to be an exorcism. What proceeded was her audience with the master. A man worshipped as a god by his followers in the deep, dark, hidden retreat. Anna had been raised to believe that he could read people's minds and listen to her dangerous thoughts. Today, Anna is free from this bondage by the cult, and now she dedicates herself to telling the world about what has been going on at the so-called Dragon Springs and what its narcissistic cult leader, Li Hongji, has been doing to people inside and outside of the compound. Investigations have revealed the damage that has been done to families as a result of the cult, the people that have needlessly died. Their refusal of modern medicine has killed many, which they deny. This group is not fading into obscurity. It has a lot more power than I thought, and it is very concerning to me, especially when I think about how many people are probably going to become indoctrinated and how many children and families are going to be affected by this. As time went on, Anna's mother began to spend more time and energy devoted towards the master than she did her own children. And eventually her faith became so great that she picked up her family and moved them to the compound where she would go on to force her daughter to become a dancer. At this time, the master was creating Shen Yun, the dancing trope that doubles as a money laundering effort. Anna's mother pushed her into becoming a dancer so that she could join the performance. Her mother believed that by doing so, she'd be guaranteed a spot in heaven. Here is how she described it. Part of the practice is this notion that Master Lee, first of all, can read everyone's mind and that he has heavenly bodies out there in the world doing this for him as well. So I grew up with this notion that my thoughts were always being monitored. And my mother said that at Dragon Springs, you were in a greater presence of spirits and the gods. It was during the training in which she was learning to dance where her anorexia first came on. According to her, what happened was during one of the classes, the teacher stopped, held her in front of the mirror, grabbed her abdomen, and told the class in front of everybody that this was not how a woman was supposed to look. At the age of 13, Anna was hospitalized with anorexia. Anna would go on to deliberately fail the audition so that she wouldn't have to perform. This caused all sorts of problems with her mother and increased her anorexia. Her mother refused medical treatment. It means you are a bad practitioner. It means you do not fully trust Master Lee if you take any kind of medication or go to a hospital even. Now eventually, over the years, she managed to escape the cult and is now telling the world about her experiences and the dangerous things that go on behind closed doors. I feel a lot of anger when I think about the fact that there are children and young adults living there with little to no access to the outside world and who are only being taught the teachings of this practice, which I believe are very damaging. It's very important that anyone caught up in a cult, particularly the Falun Gong cult, be freed as quickly as possible. And if you know someone who is stuck in some kind of a situation, there are numerous resources that you can use to reach out to those abused individuals. Right now, Falun Gong is untouchable according to the U.S. government, 
because it has a massive importance in undermining the legitimate government of China. That while I have many criticisms of the Chinese government and the way they choose to operate, the call to Falun Gong is dangerous. They are child abusers. They are dangerous people to have around. They run the notorious Epoch Times, which is essentially a conspiracy theory rag. Right now, they are emboldened and even possibly funded by the United States government to subvert Chinese society. And the Chinese government is under no obligation whatsoever to allow their society to be undermined by a cult. This very much reminds me of the Reverend Sung Ung Moon in South Korea, although he was intended to push and praise capitalism, we're seeing the opposite here, where some narcissistic cult leader is being used to attack society in order to destabilize it. And for that, many people have called on the United States government to withdraw its support for the, for the disgusting, child abusing cult that is Falun Gong. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.